Okay, <clears throat> in this video we're going to take a look at the World War II DBQ documents, and this is a commentary video to help you uh, better understand what the documents are saying, so you can uh, better locate evidence to uh, back up the answers you have to the questions. So, on document two, in this document, Haile Selassie, who is the leader of Ethiopia, is asking the League of Nations to help. It says, you know, if you guys don't help now, that right now Ethiopia we're gonna suffer we're gonna be conquered by Italy but history and God will judge you for not helping so in other words is that if you don't help us God is gonna I mean, the, we're, we're getting punished now for your lack of uh, lack of action but God will judge the League of Nations for not action for not taking any action document three here uh, paragraph one uh, Hitler is uh, sending his soldiers to the Rhineland, even though the Treaty of Versailles said that, that they couldn't. The Rhineland is right up there on the border between France and Germany, and part of the Treaty of Versailles said to protect France, to protect France and make them feel safe, Germany could not put any uh, soldiers there. Um, so Hitler's like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyways. He saw that the Treaty of Versailles was making uh, Germany unequal with everybody in Europe. He says, you know what? I'm going to put my soldiers wherever the heck I want, and I'm going to make sure that Germany is as equal as anybody else in Europe. Paragraph 2, France felt that as long as any German soldier was in the Rhineland, that the war was imminent. That the, the presence of German soldiers in that area right on their front doorstep, right next door, that you know war was uh, imminent. But they thought that talking to Hitler would eventually get him to back off. That if we put pressure on him, he will uh, he he will back off. Document four here says that <clears throat> the author here, uh, William Shire, uh, says that war was avoided. It was avoided, and he was right, but not for a very long time. He said that the uh, people of Czechoslovakia aren't happy about it, but it appears that this deal was done because of the fear and the power of the might of Germany. They figured this is a small price to pay to avoid war. That if we just sacrifice this portion of Czechoslovakia, that, you know, that's a small price to pay to uh, prevent uh, Europe to plunging into another huge war. Document 5 here, we're, we're taking a look at Neville Chamberlain. Now, Neville Chamberlain gets a bad rap in history. He looks like a, he has no spine, he's weak, he's, he's scared. Uh, but he foresees a terrible war that will affect an entire generation of people in Europe if it's not avoided. Now, he believed that Hitler wanting to take a, the German-speaking portion of Czechoslovakia wasn't really a big issue to go to war over. He's like, you know what, if that, that's all he wants, and this will avo avoid war, I can live with that. You know, he said it was a small sacrifice to avoid the much greater evil of a gigantic war. He understood Hitler that, you know, if Hitler tried to take over the world, then we're going to have to try to step up. But what he's doing right now is just a small thing, all right, small little sacrifice to make to avoid war. Document 6 here talks about Winston Churchill, who was the opposite of, of Neville Chamberlain. Churchill's like, no, we do not give in to Hitler. If you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. The more we give into him, the stronger he's going to feel. And eventually, Chamberlain's going to be uh, kicked out of office, and Winston Churchill is going to take over for Chamberlain. But he suggests that Hitler should have been prevented from forming the um, the Anschluss or the Union with Austria and taking parts of Czechoslovakia. That we should have stopped him before then. Because this would have stopped the Nazis from gaining more and more power over Europe. He says because we gave into him a little, he became more and more bold and more empowered. So he says that not acting earlier put us in a weakened position. Document 7 here says that the sacrifice of Czechoslovakia was a desperate act. So they, uh, in this case, we missed a chance to stop Hitler before he became very strong. Pretty much this is echoing the same ideas that, that uh, Churchill said, that, hey, we had a chance to stop him. We were so desperate and scared of war that we gave in to him, and we missed our chance. Document A here is talking about how allowing Hitler to rise would prevent the greater evil, which is most Hitler himself was afraid of the Soviet Union. Germany had for a long time had been afraid of the Russians and over there in the Soviet Union, and a lot of people around the world 
France, Britain, United States were all kind of afraid that if the Soviet Union ever gets their act together, they could be a dominant force in the world. And they believed that if Hitler's over there, powerful, he could stop the Soviet Union. So, really, if you think about it, Hitler was allowed to do a lot of things because they figured, hey, you have one evil, Hitler, fighting the other evil, the Soviet Union, maybe they'll end up uh, defeating themselves. Document 9 here is talked about how it was perceived that Hitler hadn't really done enough to start a war, that nobody was ready to fight him anyway, so there was no really, no one was, was even really to, uh, ready at this time to work together. So Hitler had done a bunch of little small things, but not big enough to get everyone to say, let's get together, let's team up, and stop the guy. And all the while he's doing these little things, he's gaining a little bit more power, a little bit more power, and he knows, Hitler knew that the Allies, the United States, France, Britain, Soviet Union, that nobody was really ready to team up against him yet. It was while they were waiting to team up against him that where Hitler kind of rose, and by the time that they figured out we need to team up, it was too late for a lot of people.